Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, lots of you absolutely loved the theme of kingship video that I did where I presented you guys a grade nine essay on the theme of kingship and how you can write about it in Macbeth. And lots of you requested a follow up on how you can write a grade nine response on the theme of the supernatural. So as you can see behind me, I've created basically a mind map, basically essentially an essay plan plotting all the points you can consider when you're writing about this theme. Remember that the supernatural is a central theme in the play. Shakespeare uses this theme to firstly play on anxieties that people at his time had, especially King James I. Remember that Macbeth was first performed at his court and he was obsessed with the supernatural. He even wrote a book called Demonology about it. He was obsessed that the supernatural would somehow be involved in trying to topple him and usurp him from power. So of course Shakespeare uses this theme and he plays on the anxieties at the time. Okay, so the Jacobean anxieties at the time. And also there's plenty of characters you can tie this theme to if you're writing a really powerful response on the supernatural. Now, remember a great essay always starts with a thesis statement. So let's consider what you would talk about when you were starting your supernatural essay. This is what you could discuss. So remember that the supernatural appears as a central theme in Macbeth because Shakespeare uses this theme to warn us, the audience, against trusting its corrupting influence. Okay, so in other words, the supernatural is used by Shakespeare to reveal how it can corrupt our mindsets and it can ultimately lead to our downfalls. Remember that one of the core messages within Macbeth is never trust the witches, never trust the supernatural. These juggling fiends that Macbeth calls them should never ever be believed, otherwise it will cause your downfall, okay? That's part of your thesis statement. The supernatural is a central theme as Shakespeare warns us against this corrupting influence and equally when you're making your opening thesis statement, remember to mention that the witches who are the core supernatural characters within this play, they are used as agents of chaos within the story because they speak in half truths and equivocations in order to deliberately mislead the character, specifically Macbeth. And this leads him to make a series of mistakes and leads to his downfall. So remember that the witches are supernatural characters who equivocate and they cause guilt both within Macbeth and ultimately also in Lady Macbeth before their downfall. And the supernatural is also presented as disrupting the natural order, okay? They cause Macbeth to topple divine right of kings and he goes above his position in the great chain of being. And this is what causes all the chaos that ensues in Scotland. And they do this for no reason other than just their entertainment. So they cause all of this chaos out of just sheer entertainment, nothing else, okay? So the supernatural is seen as very inherently evil. Now, after you've made your thesis statement, make sure your first paragraph directly goes to the witches. They are the core supernatural characters within this play. So remember that the witches are supernatural characters that are presented as devilish. The reason why they are devilish is because firstly, they disrupt the natural order. They go against God. They influence Macbeth to kill the king, commit regicide and kill God's own direct representative. And this causes everything to become topsy-turvy in Scotland. But equally, the witches are devilish, okay? And the supernatural by extension is devilish because they corrupt Macbeth as a character and they do so through equivocating and speaking in half rhymes. Now, one thing that people always get mistaken in their essays when they're talking about the witches, they say, oh, the witches lie. The witches tell Macbeth lies and lead him. The witches never lie, okay? So remember that the witches never at any stage lie, but what they do is they reveal just half truths rather than full truths. For example, the apparitions reveal the half truth that no man born of woman can harm Macbeth, but not the full truth that actually people who were born through cesarean C-sections were not born of women because it was unnatural and those can kill Macbeth. So Macbeth then thinks, oh, I'm indestructible. I'm gonna be absolutely fine, okay? So they speak in equivocations and half-truths, but they never lie. Now, when you're writing about the witches and how they are supernatural characters that are devilish and they disrupt the natural order, use these quotations when talking about the witches and how supernatural is illustrated as corrupting. Firstly, of course, we are introduced to them and they say fair is foul, foul is fair. When they are stating this, they're basically foreshadowing how they're going to topple the natural order. They speak in oxymorons in order to illustrate that they are agents of chaos. The second quotation, of course, is when 
they plant the seeds of ambition in Macbeth's mind by hailing him king. They say, hail Macbeth, Thane of Cordor, hail Macbeth, king hereafter, okay? So you can use hail, ellipsis, king. Equally, they also illustrate that they have co completely corrupted Macbeth's character by Act 4, scene 1, when they acknowledge that Macbeth is evil and describe how something wicked this way comes, okay? So they have completely corrupted Macbeth's character and they're really gleeful to see how much they've corrupted him. And finally, Macbeth realizes the role they've played in his downfall at the end of the play and he says, be these juggling fiends, these juggling devils, no more believed. The context point you want to make in that opening paragraph relating to the witches is how this illustrates King James's own fears and paranoia of the witches. He wrote a whole book called Demonology, which basically told his readers that the witches should not be trusted. They are agents of chaos. The second paragraph and the second grade nine point to make when writing about the witches and the supernatural, or not even the witches, but more specifically the supernatural, is to do with how they spark wicked thoughts in all the characters that listen to them. So remember that the supernatural spark wicked thoughts and actions which create intense guilt and remorse, okay? So not only do they spark these horrible thoughts in the minds of people like Macbeth, but equally Lady Macbeth, but once they act upon these thoughts and do these terrible things, i.e. committing regicide, betraying all of these people, they ultimately experience supernatural hallucinations which represents their guilt, okay? Now, the quotations that illustrate this and illustrate how the supernatural have triggered Macbeth's Hamasha, his fatal flaw of ambition, and equally leading him to feel guilty are, firstly, Macbeth has the first supernatural hallucination where he sees the floating dagger before he kills King Duncan, and he sa says, is this a dagger? The second supernatural hallucination which illustrates his guilt is when he sees the dead ghost of Banquo because he tells him to never shake that gory locks at me. And finally, Lady Macbeth has the third hallucination within the play and she sees spots of blood on her hands and cries out, out, damned spot. Now, all of these are really powerful in illustrating and tying in in to the theme of guilt. Remember that the supernatural hallucinations that happen in the play, there are three in total, symbolize the guilt that the characters feel, the guilt that Macbeth feels, but also the guilt that Lady Macbeth feels. The third and final point for your grade nine essay, okay, so you're finishing off strong, is how the supernatural trigger ambition causing the downfall of Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, okay? More specifically, make sure you discuss how the supernatural triggers ambition within Macbeth and this is illustrated when he considers killing the king, okay? So he basically considers his, firstly, vaulting ambition, but then once he's killed the king and committed this act of regicide, he now starts going on this murderous rampage because he tells his wife that they've scorched the snake, not killed it, as they are plotting Banquo's death. Equally, we learn that the supernatural trigger ambition within Lady Macbeth herself, okay? So she calls on the supernatural to unsex me. She wants to be turned into a man or she wants to get rid of her femininity in order to attain power. So she also is very ambitious as a result of the influence of the supernatural. And finally, of course, Macbeth realizes that his downfall is imminent when he says towards the end of the play, out, out, brief candle, okay? This is a metaphor for his own short life and he's gonna die because he's now realized that his trust in the supernatural is false, okay? The supernatural have deceived him. Now, when making this point, you can either opt for a discussion to do with the theme of ambition, how the supernatural triggers ambition, which becomes quite destructive within Macbeth. And of course, Lady Macbeth is completely corrupted by ambition even when we first meet her. Or you can make a context point relating to how the supernatural cause Macbeth to become ambitious and he disrupts divine right of king by committing regicide. But equally, the supernatural lead Macbeth, Lady Macbeth to go against her nature as a woman and you can tie it into how she doesn't fit into traditional Jacobean standards of women, okay? So she becomes very ambitious because of the influence of the supernatural. And this led many Jacobean people to call her the fourth witch, okay? So these are the main points to discuss when talking about the supernatural and making that grade nine essay, which will win, which will see you get great wins in the upcoming Macbeth exam.